All right, materials fans, let's take a look at the data analysis of the plastics lab data with uh, with Microsoft Excel here. Um, looks like I've got the diameters and links measured three times. We'll have to average those. So equals, and I can start typing in average. Double click on average. It puts that function in for me. Left paren, and then highlight those three cells right per in, hit enter, and then we can hop, copy that down since that's a relative reference. Looks like it's doing the right thing, B13 to D13, yeah. Uh, that's a few too many significant figures, so let's hit the decrease decimal button to get that down to four sig figs. Then we'll want to calculate the area while we're at it, equals pi d squared over 4, right? So pi is a function, built-in function. you got to do left paren, right paren, since it's a function, uh, times the diameter squared. So let's do that in parentheses as well. Diameter, shift 6, which is a little caret squared, and then divided by 4. That should give me the area. Again, decrease decimal. Make that numerically appropriate. So now I got the average diameter length and the area. Move back up to this load application speed calculation. Strain is the change in length over length, right? So let's do 0.02 times, I'm just going to put in 3 for my length. That's 0.06 inches per minute. We're going to take reading, so that's how fast we're going to run the machine. Readings every 0.5% strain. Remember that's 0 0.005 times the length of 3 inches. Oops, I forgot to put in the equal sign. There we go. So every 15 dial units, I should multiply that out just to show you how that works, equals that divided by the dial gauge factor, give me every 15 dial units. Maximum strain we're going to go to is 10%, so that's 0 0.1 times the 3 inches. Did it again, I forgot the equal sign. Edit it right there, hit enter, there we got it. So what that tells me then is that every 15 dial units I'm going to read the load. So let's start down incrementing 15, 30, 45, and I don't have to keep typing those, I can just highlight. If you do two or three of them, see how it'll keep counting all the way down? 435. What was my maximum? Maximum of 0.3. So 0.3 times or divided by the dial units, that would be 300 dial units. So I don't actually need anything beyond 300. But we'll, we'll work with that. Okay. Now I've got to take a break and go break one so I've got some data to work with. So I ran the test and I recorded the load every 15 dial units and I'm start, ready to start doing the calculations for that. So let's hit the equal sign, calculate the deformation, that's just the dial gauge reading times the dial gauge factor. And remember we got to use an absolute reference for that so I hit the F4 key which put the dollar signs in around D and 8 locking the row and column. Absolute reference. So what that should do then, when I copy that down, is it should always refer to D8. So I'll pick one randomly in the middle, A27, yep, good. It's always using D8. Next we can calculate the strain. That's the deformation divided by the length, or the average length. Also got to use an absolute reference. 
All right, now let's do the stress. That's the load divided by the area. Also an absolute reference. And then the strain at 0.2% offset we're going to use to do the uh, modulus elasticity line. That is just the strain, actual strain, plus 0 0.002 for 0.2%. Okay. Now we should be able to copy all three of those at once. And there you have it. A lot of sig figs there. Let's... Uh, Let's uh, drop the number of decimal places. Doesn't want to do it. Why is that? One at a time, perhaps. That's good. That's the one it doesn't like right there for some reason. I mean, it didn't like that first zero. Maybe it doesn't like doing decimal places of zero. That sort of makes some amount of sense. There we go. All down to four sig figs. Save it. So now we can go ahead and do the plot, right? Stress strain. Highlight the data. Insert. Scatter. And let's use scatter with smooth line with markers. Don't do the line plot. All right, so there is our initial round. What do we need here? Titles. This is HDPE stress strain at I think it's 72 Fahrenheit. Be descriptive with your titles. If I triple click, click three times fast, it'll give me, it'll highlight the whole thing and then I can type right over it. PSI. And the, this here is strain. Looks like an inch per inch, but I wanted percent, right? So let's just label it percent for now and I'll fix that. If we switch the strain column here, Highlight it and just hit the percent button. I'll change that to percent and also change that to percent. Um, keeping in mind that 100% is really 1.0. I can delete that series one and there's my first stress drain plot. You're going to want to be able to identify the uh, modulus of elasticity and the yield point from this. And the way I'd suggest we do that is to replot a little bit of the data, you know, in the in the linear elastic range, the beginning of the curve, and then put a trend line through it. Let's give that a try. If I left click once and then right click, which I probably didn't have to left click, but and add a series. Alright, I'm gonna call this series E and then just plot the first bunch of data points. So the x values are strain. Let's just take about, I guess about 10 of them. That's the x values. I hit the funny button. Do the same thing for the y values. Okay. You can see it working its way onto the plot there. It looks like maybe I've got one extra, but hit OK. Now I've got more than one series. So when you have to go and plot all three specimens on one plot, you can also do that here by adding the two other series. Hit OK. And now I've got this series in red, which I can right click on, add trend line. And trend lines you can do in multiple different uh, equations, but we're going to stick with linear for now have it forecast forward a little bit to extend the line, make it look nicer. Notice as I click around you can see it putting the stuff on there and have it display the equation on the chart so I can get the y equals mx plus b or the uh, modulus of elasticity, the slope of that line. Hit close. That looks pretty good. I think I used an extra point there. 
So let's trim that out. You see this equation up here? If I left click on that once, I can either edit it right here, change the 29s to 28s, just like that, hit enter. Or you can actually drag these here. Either way. In any case, there it is. And then this is just a text box, so I can take that and edit it. I'll just delete out the, the intercept, put in the units, All right? E, and then probably it's a good idea to cut down the sig figs here, so let's just make that zero. So E is 23,750 PSI in this case. Oh, time to save it. Now, to get the yield point, we're going to use the 0.2% offset method. So what we want to do is draw a line parallel to that modulus line that we just did, only 0.2% to the right. So that's where this column of data comes in. Let's go back into the data, right-click, select data, and we're going to add another series. This is going to be the 0.2%. Uh, I'll just do it as 0.002% just so I know which one is which. X values uh, are again strain. We'll do just the first from the second. I think I picked nine different ones this time, right? From the, What I want to do is just do it exactly the same number of points as I did for the modulus line. I think I did it wrong. Hold on. What I really wanted to do for the strain values is the 0.2%. Right? Like that. See how I've got this green line 0.2% to the right? Remember the difference between percentage and decimal. So now I've got three different series. I hit OK. And let's go to that green one, right click, add trend line, forecast it forward a little bit. Just as long as it goes through the data, then I can zoom in and get it. And I don't need the equation this time. Hit OK. If I want to clean this up a little bit, I could, uh, uh, let's see, Format. I don't want to format the trend line. What I want to do is be able to select that green data. There, I finally left left clicked around enough that it highlighted the green data, and I can format data series. Look at the markers. No fill marker options none. I think that'll shut it off. And let's look at the line style. One of these should shut it off. No line right there. So the data doesn't even show up on there. Okay. Save it. So now what we can do is identify that yield point with a line. So let's insert a shape and use just a straight line. I'm looking here. I would normally zoom in a little more, but to show it on the screen here, I'll just left click there and I'm trying to draw a parallel line across that looks pretty good right there so now I can identify that with a text box I'll just stick, pick a text box here or it's also in here and I'll just left click there and type in yield equals and it looks like it's let's see a thousand hundred uh, maybe about fourteen hundred psi and if I didn't it doesn't line up exactly where I want it so I can move it up a little bit so it's like right next to the line and there you have it